Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, So Amelia, where I talk about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. Welcome to today's video, where I'm going to share a fabric haul of some fabrics that I have bought for summer and going into the autumn. So if you're interested in seeing some fabrics and some patterns that I have recently bought, stay tuned and enjoy watching as I share those with you. I'll start today's vlog by sharing what I'm wearing. It is a hack of the Avid Seamstress The Daydress. That's one of my favourite patterns, I've made it quite a few times and when I made it in this gingham fabric I wanted to play around a bit with the bodice so I chopped it off at just above my natural waist and added in a shaped waistband and then added the skirt on. So it was lots of fun to play around with. I played around with the back a little bit as well so I'll pop in a photo of that so that you can see. It's a very easy sew, the instructions are brilliant and I really enjoy wearing it. So the first two fabrics that I'm going to share with you are from Sewisfaction and the first one is an Atelier Brunette fabric called Nerily Night. It's this one here and I just love the pattern. It is a sweatshirting. It's not terribly thick so I think it will be really good as an extra layer in the summer and going into the autumn as well. We are hopefully going away on a family holiday down to the, the seaside shortly and I'd really like just another couple of layers that I can put over my sundresses and things when it gets a bit cooler at night time. So if I've got time before we leave, I'd like to try and get that made up. And I've got two patterns to choose from. One is the Billy Sweatshirt by Tilly and the Buttons, which I've made before as a sweater dress, but I've never made the sweater version. So I'd quite like to try that. And the other one that I've not yet made is the Grainline Linden Sweatshirt, which is another one I'm really interested in trying. But it's a beautiful, beautiful fabric, and it's called, yes, Narrowly Night by Atelier Brunette. It's the first time I've sewn with one of their sweatshirtings, so I'll be really interested to see how that goes. What I did buy to go with that fabric was the ribbing. Now, unfortunately, Sewers Faction had sold out of that, but I did find some at Guthrie Garni, so I bought the matching ribbing. I am still buying my fabrics online because of lockdown, and so I just decided to buy the matching Italia brunette ribbing so that I knew I was going to get a good match and it is a great match. So I'll hold those up there so you can see the colors match really perfectly. So I'm really pleased with that. I could have just used the same sweatshirting fabric as my cuffs and my neckband, but I really wanted to give ribbing a try this time, especially with the linden. I wanted to make sure that I had the ribbing so that it would pull on and off easily. Now, because I was placing an order from Sewers Faction, I wanted to get a couple of things at the same time just to save on shipping. And I decided to buy another sweatshirting fabric. I haven't made a lot of sweatshirts yet, but the ones I have made, I wear all the time. So I just thought, I know it's the summer right now, but it will be autumn sooner than we would like. And it made sense to just buy another sweatshirting fabric. And I saw this one, which is called a super soft melange knit. And it is so soft and really thick and warm. It's almost got a brushed texture to it, which I think will be so snuggly in the winter time. I don't normally buy black. If you've watched my videos before, you know I love color and I love pattern. And black is not a color that I tend to buy very often. However, in terms of making sweatshirts and things, I think black is a really good color to get. It will go with a lot of the dresses and skirts that I have made already. And so hopefully I'll get quite a lot of wear out of it in the autumn and the winter. And again, I'm thinking those same two patterns for this one. I thought perhaps the Billy sweatshirt, because it does have those beautiful bishop sleeves, I thought that might look really, really nice with this sweatshirt, which sweatshirting, which does have a bit more of a drape to it. So then next, I bought two fabrics from Guthrie Garni. I bought the ribbing that I showed you previously, and I also bought this Tencel Modal jersey fabric, and it's called Blossom Sprigs, and this is it here. Now, I had never sewn with Tencel Modal jersey before until I made my Kylo wrap dress. And I made that with a Tencel Modal jersey from Guthrie Garni as well. And it is such a lovely jersey to wear. It is so soft, so comfortable, and I absolutely love it. So when I was placing the order for the ribbing, again, I wanted to save a little bit on shipping if I could and buy something else at the same time. I am also trying to add some t-shirts to my wardrobe at the moment to go with my skirts and I thought this would be a lovely fabric to use for a t-shirt. And for this one, I'm thinking of a t-shirt. I have made the Friday Pattern Company Adrienne blouse before with a short sleeve, which I really, really liked. And the other option I was thinking of is the Forget Me Not Patterns Iris t-shirt. So those are the two options I'm thinking of for that fabric. 
but I think it's very pretty, very summery, and also it'll be a good one um, in the spring next year <laughs> when I wear it again. So that's that one there. I'll just say now, all of these fabrics will be linked below in the description box, so if there are any that take your fancy, do go into the description box and click on the links which I have included below. Now if you've watched my recent videos, you'll know that I just made my first jumpsuit, and that was the Zadie jumpsuit by Paper Theory Patterns and I loved it. It was such a fun make. I've worn it lots <laughs> and I would love to add another one to my wardrobe. So I decided this time I'd like to try making it from a linen fabric and I know that Susie at Threadquarters stocks beautiful Irish linens so I headed over to her website and I found this beauty. The colour is called Azure Blue. Again it's linked below. And it's an Irish linen and it's 230 GSM. So I think it will be a good weight for the Zadie as it will sort of hold its shape. But still it has a little bit of, of drape um, that will look really nice with those pleats and gathers for the Zadie. So that is my linen for the Zadie. That's not been washed yet. I've just had it here in my sewing room and I've just been looking at it. I really love blue on me. And I think this is a particularly lovely shade of blue and I'm so excited to get that made into a Zadie. I don't know if it will happen this summer, I'm hoping it will, but since the children are going off on their summer holidays next week I think I will have rather less sewing time once they're on holiday. So that may be one that gets made up, maybe even in the autumn, we'll see. But I'm so excited about that linen, it's just beautiful. The last fabric I bought this month was for some pyjamas. Now there is a challenge on Instagram at the moment being run by Crafty So and So uh, called Crafty PJ Party and I'd love to be able to get involved if I can get these made up in time. Um, also we're going away on a family holiday and as with all of us I'm sure I have been living in my pyjamas over the last year and a half and I definitely need to have some new pyjamas in my wardrobe <laughs> to go away with. So I'm hoping to get these made up in time. And so I've bought this beautiful, it's called Sweet Cherry, and it's a cotton poplin by Pigeon Wishes. And I got this one from Hey Sew Sister. So it's red cherry, as you can see, on a navy background. And it's a really nice cotton poplin. So I'll see if I can show you. It's got, it's not too thick of a cotton poplin. It's got some movement to it, which I think will be really nice for pyjamas. It should hold the shape. There'll still be some lightness and airiness to that. I'd like to make some summer pyjamas out of that, so a short and shirt pyjama set, I think. Hopefully I'll get that made up in time to join the Crafty So and So PJ Party. I'll pop information about that below in the description box in case you want to get involved in that as well. So to go with that fabric, I want to use some piping on my collar, cuffs and things, so I did buy some red bias binding piping from Plush Addict. Now I could have made my own but my sewing time is quite precious at the moment with three children, so if I can buy piping, I usually do, just because it's a bit easier. So this is 10 millimeter binding, red binding, uh, and that will go, I think, really nicely with that cherry fabric, just to bring out that red. So that's for that. And then I'll need some buttons down the front of those as well. So I went on to the Swagman's Daughter, which if you've not visited their website, you have to. It's a treasure trove of the most delightful goodies. There are sewing bits and pieces, there are some toys, some vintage toys, books, all sorts of things there, so do go and take a look. But I found these beautiful vintage buttons and I think I'll put them down at the front of the shirt. I think they'll go really beautifully with the red cherries. They're actually a similar size, <laughs> which is nice. So yes, that's my pyjama plans for this month. Then this month I also bought a few patterns. So the first pattern I bought conveniently follows on from my last fabric and that is the Carolyn Pyjamas by Closet Core Patterns. Now I just thought a pair of short and shirt pyjamas would be really nice. So I'll show you the line drawings. They're on the back here. You can see there's view A which is long sleeved with piping, view B which is long sleeve without piping and view C which is the short and short sleeves with piping. I am planning to make view C with the piping in that cherry fabric and I think that will look really lovely for the summer. I tend to sleep in short sleeve pyjamas for most of the year anyway as I get quite warm at night so I think that'll be a great make to see me through into the autumn as well. I also bought uh, the Forget Me Not Patterns Iris Tea for that Tencel Modal jersey. 
I know I want to try that pattern because I really love the pleating detail on the sleeve of that t-shirt and so I bought that pattern this month as well. I bought it as a PDF and I've just sent it away to be printed on A0 paper so when that gets back hopefully I'll give that a go. But I thought that looked like such a lovely basic t-shirt pattern but with just that added detail of the pleating on the sleeves. Now By Hand London released a new pattern recently and that was the Sand Deep dress and skirt and it's this one here. And when I saw it come up on my feed, I just thought that was one that I could not resist. I don't have a particularly special occasion in mind for this dress. However, we did have our 10 year wedding anniversary last year, which for obvious reasons we didn't get to go out and celebrate. <laughs> and that's at the end of August. So I did think perhaps I might make this one and we can have a big celebration for our 11th wedding anniversary this year, but we'll see. I just thought that made up in like a red tinsel twill would look so stunning. So that might be one that I save for a special occasion or I thought I might just make up the skirt because I think the skirt would be stunning as well. Now I do have links to all of these patterns below so do go and check them out if you want more detail about the size bandings that these come in. This is a lovely inclusive pattern. It comes in sizes 0 to 24 which is great but it comes in two cup sizes, a B cup size and a CD I think cup size band. I've gone for the B cup because that suits my measurements more. Uh, but I haven't decided on which size I will make when and if I make that one because it's not quite on the radar yet. I just absolutely adored that pattern and thought I needed it in my collection. So it will probably sit somewhere in my sewing room providing me with inspiration for that special occasion um, when we get to go and wear pretty dresses again and celebrate with our nearest and dearest. Now when I was browsing the Merton to Mills website recently I saw this beautiful pattern come up and it is the skipper dress. So this is one for my daughter. It comes in sizes three to eight years. So that's quite a nice size range for older girls, really. So she's probably too little for it this summer, but it was the only one left online. So I thought I'll pick it up now. And those are the line drawings there. So you can see it's just such a sweet little sailor style dress. And again, I thought I could possibly make this in the autumn in a slightly thicker. You can see a chambray here or a baby needle cord in a navy. Um, I just think it's such a sweet dress. Even if I don't make that up until next summer, it's a lovely one to have in my collection and I can see myself getting a lot of use out of that. So that's the skipper dress by Merchant and Mills. And then the last pattern that I bought this month was the Gracie Jumper, which is a dress by an American company called Blue Ribbon Heirloom. And it's such a cute vintage style dress for a little girl. I couldn't resist this one either. So when I saw the pattern come up, I thought it was just stunning. I love vintage dresses on little girls particularly. I love the fullness of the skirt and I love the really interesting yoke detail on this one as well. Now please forgive this fabric. It's just come out of the wash. It's just finished drying and I have yet to iron it, but I will show you this, the fabric that I have in mind for the Gracie jumper. And it's the fabric that came in my most recent So Haley Jane box. So it actually arrived on Monday and I'm filming this on Tuesday. So it's been washed and dried very quickly because I absolutely love it. And that is this nautical print blue cotton poplin with the red ships. Now I did think this came in another colorway with yellow ships, but I'm so glad I got this one because I think it goes really, really well with my red bias binding that I already bought for my Carolyn pajamas and the Swagman Daughters red vintage buttons <laughs> that I also bought for the Carolyn pajamas. Now I have rather too many as you'll see of those buttons for the pajamas so I will definitely have some left over and this dress, the Gracie jumper dress, fastens with two buttons I believe over the back shoulder. So when I saw the fabric arrive I thought oh it'd be perfect for a little girl's dress and I have the piping and the buttons all ready to go. So yes, that's the Gracie jumper pattern by Blue Ribbon Heirloom and I'm excited to try and get that made up as well soon. Now you do get 2.5 meters of that fabric in the So Haley Jane box. So there is more than enough to make that dress and I should have some left over. So I'll just throw in a little extra <laughs> plan for you in this fabric haul video. I think what I will do with the rest of this fabric is to make a Monica skirt which is a below the kofi pattern, which is a lovely New Zealand pattern company that I really enjoy. She has a beautiful skirt pattern that I've made before, um, gathered with elastic at the back, and then it's got a flat waistband at the front and it just falls in a lovely A-line shape, which I wear 
all the time I've made a rifle paper co um, cotton version of the Monica skirt and I think it would look really cute in this fabric too for the summer so we can match in our little skirt and dress if I get those made up in time from this cotton poplin. So I hope you enjoyed all those fabrics. I've certainly got enough to be keeping me busy over the rest of the summer and probably into the autumn as well with those sweatshirting fabrics. Do let me know below which one you liked or if you've got any other ideas for the fabrics do let me know. I am looking out for good sweatshirt patterns so if you have one that you would recommend or you particularly enjoy making please do let me know in the comments box below. It's always great hearing what you're making as well or do let me know what fabric you've been buying this month. It's always fun to see what you're choosing to make and to buy. So thank you for watching. Do come back next week when I'm going to be sharing a week in my sewing life. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye!